Hi guys, today I will show you how to troubleshoot your Mazda 6 GGGY model basically from 2002 till 2008 model models equipped with uh, xenon headlights this one is the, with the chrome bezel there is another version which is with a black uh, bezel inside and these are also two types the one with the integrated fog uh, light with a projector fog light and the one without the projector fog light this one doesn't have a fog light uh, projector it's a dual light so uh, let me start with the troubleshooting with the low beam troubleshooting at these headlights if you have a low beam failure that's to say if you don't have a low beam it means that you have to check three parts your xenon system at these headlights are consist of three parts as stated you have one d2s bulb an integrated uh, uh, in, uh, igniter located inside the headlight and a ballast unit these true these three parts consist of your xenon system let me show you how they work in practice as, as you can see the ballast unit generates the needed uh, voltage and sends it to the igniter and in igniter in turn powers the xenon bulb the xenon gas inside the hid bulb so if you don't have a low beam one of these three parts is faulty let me show you their location in the headlight here you have a back cover uh, by the way uh, i have to mention that according to the official service mazda manual workshop manual in order to replace your xenon bulb your uh, xenon ballast you have to take off all the headlight from the car that's mean the official mazda workshop service manual says that you have to remove the bumper and you have to remove the headlight altogether from the car although there are a lot of videos out there at youtube you can also see them you can try to replace if you are sure that your your faulty part is the xenon bulb you can try to replace it uh, via gaining access under the wheel arc of your car uh, removing the fender and trying to reach your back cover from the wheel arc but as i stated officially the, the most safest way in order not to break the, any part from the headlight uh, mazda takes off all the headlights from the car let me show you you have to turn counterclockwise the back cover in order to see your xenon bulb and the connector of your xenon igniter here as you can see in order to release the uh, xenon igniter connector the socket you have to turn it counterclockwise and pull it out and then you will see your xenon bulb the xenon bulb is fixed to your projector via the uh, retaining clip via ring you have to also turn it counterclockwise the axis is very limited that's why I stated it's always better to remove your headlight altogether from your car I know it's very uh, time-consuming and uh, a great hassle to do that but unfortunately this is the only way I stated as showed you pre previously your xenon bulb type is d2s type d2s type you can use any d2s type of course always better to use uh, original products uh, not the aftermarket ones and here is your xenon igniter socket basically most of the time the socket in time 
if you do not lock the xenon bulb when replacing the xenon bulb properly till the end sometimes it begins to, if you leave it like this in time you will your socket inside will burn and you will have a de deformation inside which means that it will not make a full contact with your bulb and it will begin to flicker uh, as long as the xenon system is concerned this the, the, these these two parts plus you have a one ballast unit located underneath the headlight you will need a t t20 torx torx to remove the uh, screws underneath the headlight I already removed them in order to not to lose time here this is the ballast unit it is automating uh, lighting mate with a part number 1 307 329 086 086 Litronic 4.1D is the ballast unit that Mazda 6 is uh, uh, is using. There are a lot of other ballasts that you can use for this car. For example, this one is from Mercedes, from a uh, very common model from W2203. This one is from BMW models, same shape, same plug ballast units. In this case, they are interchangeable. You can use them in order to replace your faulty ballast at your Mazda 6 Xenon headlight. Uh, let me check whether I have forgot something to mention about the Xenon system of Mazda 6. I think that's all for the, for this uh, Xenon system. If I have to summarize, if you have a low beam failure, one of these three parts is faulty. Either your D2S type Xenon bulb, your Xenon igniter, which has a part number 1307-329-080. This igniter, by the way, the same igniter, igniter with the same numeration is used at many BMW E46 models, inc including compact models. So if you have a faulty igniter, you can source it from the BMW Xenon headlights. And by the way, uh, if you find out that you have a faulty igniter, after you swap the Xenon bulb, from the working side headlight to the non-working side headlight and after you swap the xenon ballast from the working side headlight and put it to the non-working side headlight and if you still do not have a low beam given that your wiring is okay and all the fuses are okay then it means that your xenon igniter is faulty then you have to replace it the next video will be about how to replace this igniter unit igniter which is located as you can see inside the headlight basically you don't have a access to the screws to the fixing screws in order to unscrew them so you have to open the headlight all together you have to remove the lens and replace it in the next video i will show you how to remove the lens and subsequently how to replace the xenon igniter thanks for watching guys that's all for now see you next in the next video all the best bye bye for now hi guys in this video i will show you how to replace your uh, assumingly faulty igniter at your mazda 6 gg gy models from 2002 till 2008 if you have a low beam failure and you you found find out that your faulty part is your xenon igniter then you are in a big trouble i mean uh, because you cannot straight replace this part you will you will have to remove the lens 
you will have to open the headlight and remove the remove the faulty igniter and replace it it's not a simple operation most uh, basically mazda treats these parts as non-replaceable part so according to mazda it's better for you if you have a faulty igniter then replace all the headlight assuming that you found a replacement igniter and you want to replace your faulty igniter inside your headlight i will show you how to do that in short as uh, showed you just a seconds before if you have a low beam failure either your xenon bulb d2s type your xenon igniter or your ballast unit is faulty now we assume that our faulty part is the xenon igniter whether you have a the deformed socket igniter socket connector or you have a uh, wiring problem just like this one i will show you how to replace your xenon igniter first you have to remove these clips there are a couple of clips around the headlight you have to remove them you can use flathead screwdriver and there is the last one right. it's better to remove also the indicator socket Now I will use a heat gun to open the headlight, but you can also use a, your oven in order to heat your headlight. Just be careful not to overheat the headlight in order not to deform it. Basically this uh, plastic, the plastic casing is uh, worn at these headlights and they are very prone to damage so if you broke them at some point it's not that important it's more important to seal it back properly
this is one of the most e easiest headlights to replace the lens because the sealant that is used at these headlights are is soft one and with the simple heating you can see that it's very prone to open you can do it very easily at domestic conditions you don't have you don't need any specific tools to do that as you can see you can remove the headlight lens very easily Now I want to show you the igniter. The igniter is located at the bottom of your of the headlight. You will see that there are two screws at each side of the igniter and basically in order to remove and replace the igniter you need also to re remove the headlight projector. In order to remove the headlight projector safely and not to break the holders projector holders it's recommended to hit them properly just again be careful not to overheat You can remove it even with with hand here. Let me not risk and heat a little bit more. Now it should be okay. Here. It comes out easily. You have a one wire here, grounding wire. Just remove it. Remove the igniter connector. And here, this is your low beam projector. And assuming that this is the faulty igniter, you will need T20, there is a socket also here, tripping socket, you have to remove it as well. And then you will need T20 Torx to remove the screws. Yeah. Here, nothing special. We assume that this headlight igniter with the part number 1307329080 is faulty. By the way, as stated in my previous videos, you can find exactly this igniter at BMW E46 models with tripping igniters. It's just the same igniter. Is used also at the Mazda 6 models. If you can easily source it, uh, you can use also the compact uh, models of BMW E46. Assuming that this is the faulty one, and assuming that you find the exact uh, exact igniter, and you want to place it back, you just have to follow the all these steps back backwards. You have to do undo all these steps until now. I will not fix it there because I will use these headlights as a downer headlight to repair another one. That's why I will not put back the igniter. 
just I will put back the projector and I want to show you first of all the most important thing that when fitting back the igniter is putting the don't forget to put the uh, headlight leveling motor tip back to its place here you have a, a headlight motor and don't forget to insert the headlight tip back to its place which is here first you have to put the headlight le leveling tip back and then you will press the projector arms back now assuming that you already put the working igniter back and then you put the uh, headlight uh, projector back following by not forgetting the to put the leveling motor uh, back in place then you have to put also the ground cable back which is under the projector now it's okay then just make sure that your sealant is enough and not that dry before putting back the lens if you see that your sealant is not proper is and it's not uh, it's uh, somehow uh, is dry in coat you can also put some silicone butyl additional butyl when you fixing the uh, putting back the headlight projector in this case as i stated i will use this headlight as a donor headlight to repair another one and i will not bother to put some sealant back but it's always recommended to put although minimal quantity some butyl sealant back and here there is enough butyl but as i stated I will not put all of them back I just want to make the point and draw the attention if you find out that the old sealant is not proper then you can use additional one before putting back the lens you have to uh, reheat again the casing As stated, this headlight removal, uh, lens removal replacement is very easy to do because the silicone used here is soft one and it's very easy to operate. As stated, since I will use this headlight as a donor headlight, I will not try to Fix the fix the headlight altogether. Just wanted to show you how to do that back. If I were you, as stated, I will always use additional butyl to reseal it. I will leave it like this. For the reason I mentioned and then you have to put back the clips
I guess that's all for igniter replacement. Guys, if you have any questions regarding this headlight, please feel free to write down in the comment section. Ask your questions there. I will try to reply to all of you. Thanks for watching guys. All the best. Bye for now. Hi guys. In this quick video, I will show you how to replace your xenon bulb, burnout xenon bulb at your Mazda 6 xenon headlight at Mazda 6 GGGY models from 2002 till 2008. If you have a burnout bulb, xenon bulb, uh, it means that you have you are in a trouble. You will understand why I am saying this. Uh, basically, official uh, Mazda manual says that in order to replace the xenon bulb, you have to remove the headlight from the car altogether. And probably you will understand why this is as such. Because behind the xenon headlights, actually, you don't have a sufficient access in order to replace the xenon bulb. As you can see, even when the headlight is off the car, you can see that the access is very limited and just imagine how you can replace this xenon bulb which is fixed via retaining clip plus it has a uh, igniter connector be be behind again locked and assume that this is all in uh, at the car and you have to you have to insert your hand there and make a, uh, an operation it's simply impossible without breaking uh, something. Uh, if you look at the uh, other Mazda 6 videos at YouTube, you will see that there is almost no access behind the headlight. Uh, some are trying to change the halogen type uh, bulbs, high beam and low beam bulbs, using the access uh, under the fender, under the wheel, wheel arc, by removing uh, the fender but for the xenon type headlights it's very difficult still it's uh, you can uh, you can try it if you know what what you are doing you can try it but uh, please bear in mind that you are risking to break the expensive xenon bulb a connector or the igniter uh, socket the legs of the igniter sockets so as stated the official Mazda repair manual says that you have to remove the headlight from the car altogether, even for a simple bulb replacement. Unfortunately, this is the case. And now I will demonstrate how to replace the xenon bulb at these headlights, and then you will clearly understand why Mazda says uh, to remove the headlight altogether from the car, to remove the bumper, uh, to deal uh, all with the all hassle and remove the headlight uh, from the car just for a simple bulb replacement. As you can see, you have a back cover there. It's, it's with a, a locking mechanism. Always observe, it says on top, for instance, even at the back cover, it shows you where the nut should be placed when, remo when uh, reinstalling the cover. It's very important just always observe this writing tab otherwise you will not uh, be able to fix the rear cover it will not be in place it has three positions but no position will be in place always observe top writing and in order to lock it you have to turn it clockwise and in order to unlock it you have to turn counterclockwise as you can see it closes very firmly. You need to push firmly in order to lock or unlock. The reason for that is to prevent the headlight from moisture or from water ingress in order to protect the xenon system inside. Now, let's see how to replace the xenon bulb. As you can see, you, you, you have a uh, igniter connection, connector here. You have to turn it counterclockwise and pull it out and if you uh, pay attention the cables of the igniters are very 
are very short and even the igniter connector prevents you to have an access to the xenon bulb you see that's why it's always better to remove the headlight altogether from the car you have a really limited access to work with so once remove the uh, connector socket you have a xenon bulb here as you can see it's not uh, it's fixed firmly fixed if you pull it out it will not come out because it's uh, fixed with a retainer clip inside you also have to unlock the retainer clip by turning it counterclockwise which is also locked firmly and then you can get the xenon bulb and the retaining clip assuming that this is the faulty one and this is the working one now you will see how difficult it is to reinsert replace the bulb uh, given that it's uh, there is a very limited access first of all you have to insert the xenon bulb and if you assume that you are uh, doing that on a headlight which is on the car it's absolutely very difficult first of all this bulb should stay there you should fix it then in order then you have to uh, put the retaining clip back in order to lock it now it's moving and it, at any any small vib vibration it will fall down first of all this bulb should be there should, and then you have to put the retaining clip again you have to observe the top writing if you do not observe this top writing here at the retaining clip you cannot fix the retainer there and you cannot fix the bulb in any way let's try let's say let's try like this and you are trying to put the retainer uh, retainer clip around the moving bulb that's why Mazda says to remove the headlight altogether. There are two notches at each side of the bulb. And in, if you do not observe the top writing, you cannot fix it at all. Now I will eject it and I will put it properly this time. I just wanted to show you how difficult it is. Now the top writing is on top. Again, you have to be sure that your bulb is not moving. As you can see, the bulb, uh, the igniter socket is preventing you to work properly there. And then observing the top notches, the, it, the, now it's on place. And you have to turn it clockwise and you, you will feel it and you will hear the click noise. Now, as you can see, the bulb is firmly placed. Even if you want, you cannot eject it. And final stage, you can put the igniter socket back and turn it clockwise. Now everything is at place. And then you have to put the xenon uh, back cover back. Observing the top writing again, putting at the right place, turning clockwise and that's all uh, I assume that you understand why the Mazda, Mazda service says uh, please remove the headlight although it costs removing the bumper altogether and so on otherwise you are you are risking to break your expensive xenon part parts or internals of your headlights thanks for watching guys all the best bye for now hi guys in this quick video i just want to review all the replaceable parts at uh, mazda 6 gg gy uh, xenon headlights for the models between 2002 and 2008 i will show you all the replaceable parts with their part numbers on them basically if you have a xenon this xenon headlight you will have Let's start uh, with, with the bulbs. Your xenon bulb is D2 S-type xenon bulb. 
D2 S type xenon bulb. This is for projection type headlights. S stands for projection type. And then you have an igniter inside. It's uh, with the part number 1307 329 080. This is the same igniter which is used at uh, uh, BMW E46 models. And then you have a ignite uh, retainer clip here with the part number 1300-290-122. This is used to, to fix the xenon bulb to the projector. Then you have an indicator type headlight, uh, uh, headlight bulb. In order to unlock it, you have to turn it counterclockwise till the end. If you not turn the socket till the end, you, you will not be able to remove it in any way. You will break the three legs inside the lo located at the socket. Here, the, it's a very common fault when uh, people do not know how to replace it or if you do not unlock it till the end then you are breaking these uh, fragile legs your indicator type bulb is PY21W actually uh, actually it's written uh, on the headlight itself I will show you in a minute let me show you the back cover the number of the back cover the part number is F014 002 520 this is the for the low beam back cover it's same for the right and the left side and then for the high beam you have a h1 bulb which is located inside the headlight as you can see i will not pull it out but it's h1 one of the most common, the oldest type halogen bulbs. Then, if you have a, a xenon headlight with the integrated uh, fog light, you will have here another projection uh, projector, very small projector, which will be again with H1 uh, halogen type bulb. This one is uh, the version without the integrated fog light. And then underneath your headlight, you, you, you have a ballast unit with a part number 1307-329-086. This ballast unit is used at the Mazda 6 models. Let me, let me see whether I have forgotten something. Yes, the back cover, by the way, the, the part number for the back cover high beam back cover is F014002522 it's automatic lighting mate this is the back cover for your high beam this is your low beam this is your high beam I guess if you if you wonder by the way it's just enough to look at your top of your headlight to see the bulb types if you have all the options, you will have one H1, one H3, uh, one PY21W bulb, and D2S type xenon bulb. If you have a xenon type headlight, it's D2S type xenon bulb, your low beam, or your low beam, if you have a halogen type headlight, your low beam is H1 bulb. I guess that's all for the Mazda 6 GGGY models thanks for looking guys all the best bye for now